I'm delighted to introduce our very first Politics Hub guest, Wes Streeting, Shadow House Secretary, kept his job in the reshuffle. Congratulations, Thank I guess. Thank you. Yeah. Um, now, I'm keen to talk about the reshuffle, obviously, but it feels like we should start with what is really the top story of the day, uh, which is the school's concrete crisis. Yeah. And Gillian Keegan being caught on camera saying she's done a good job, while other people have sat on there. Do you think she's got a point? She hasn't been Education Secretary for that long. I think people are looking for someone to take some responsibility for sorting this out. And I think she's misunderstood why people are angry about that off the cuff, you know, off those cuff, off the cuff remarks. It wasn't that she was effing and blinding. It was that she was basically saying like, hang on a minute, I've done such a great job. Why is no one thanking me? Which I, I've got to tell you, having met with my local head teachers before the summer about the pressure that they're under as school leaders will really stick in the throat for them. Schools are already under enormous pressure. Head teachers are really struggling to navigate their budgets and to start the term with this chaotic backdrop and then to see the education secretary saying, why isn't people thanking me, I think is an insult. I also think that after 13 years of Conservative government, there's probably no better monument to their failure than crumbling classrooms and school buildings literally being propped up and children missing out on the vital start to the school year because of the government's incompetence and the fact that over years now, they've consistently made the wrong decisions, been really short-termist, and it's stored up bigger problems and a bigger cost. And Rishi Sunak's in it up to his neck on At this. At the same time, though, this concrete was used in schools from the 50s right up until the 90s. I mean... The last Labour government obviously didn't, obviously didn't get rid of all of it either, did you? Well, we had the Building Schools for the Future programme with the ambition to modernise every school in the country. The Conservatives came in in 2010. Michael Gove scrapped the programme, later admitting it was a mistake and apologising. But Rishi Sunak, when he was Chancellor, halved the school buildings budget. So, uh, and, and when you're in government after 13 years, and I'm not saying this is all Gillian Keegan's fault personally, of course she'd been in the job five minutes, but she is part of a government that's been in for 13 years. So are you going to spend more money then than the Conservatives on this? Well, we are going to have to spend money on fixing the problem. There's no doubt about that. What so worries how much, us... How much money are you prepared to put into this? Well, what worries us at the moment is that we don't know precisely how many schools... That's not what I'm asking. And we don't know the size that's, of the bill. That's not but, what I'm asking. But, but the direct answer to your question, Sophie, is we don't know how much this is going to cost yet. And when we come on your programme and say, you know, and you put to us, will you fund this or will you spend on that? And we get this from campaigners and, and voters. Will you? One of the reasons why we're so cautious about spending commitments isn't just because the public finances are in the mess, but the price tag of solving so many of these urgent problems, it goes up and up and okay, up. OK, I'll ask, I'll ask it a different way then. Um, you're saying, you're talking about Rishi Sunak cutting money, you're talking about underinvestment over the last 10 years. Uh, let's have a look at the capital spending going back to 2010. You know, you praise the record of the last Labour government and you can see there how it's gone down. Uh, 2010, where Labour uh, was in power, up to 9.8, 9.2 billion, and that's gone all the way down to 4.9. So will yeah. you restore capital spending to what it was under the last Labour government? Well, I think that chart shows that people can judge us on our record, which is better than the So why are you going to be restoring this money? It's, it's about money, and isn't it? it? Of course it's about money, but also so you can understand why Rachel Reeves and her new deputy, Darren Jones, before they think about the wider capital programme for schools, the first thing that they're focused on today in relation to schools is what on earth is the price tag for sorting out RAC going to be? Because, of course, we are going to have to spend what it takes to make schools safe. There's nothing more important in terms of school capital spending than making sure that classrooms don't so fall will on kids' heads. So will that be under a Labour government? Will whatever you say you will spend what it takes to make schools safe, would that come from the Treasury rather than existing education well, budgets? Well, I, I, think, I think it's one of the things that Rachel and Darren are going to have to work through. I can't through. answer these questions, though. It's quite... because, because, Sophie, this isn't, this isn't... With respect, this is not our fault or our problem. I'm not saying it it's is your the fault. Fact that it is, but it is, but it is the fact, Sophie, the reason I can't tell you what the bill will be today is because the Conservatives won't publish the number of... Or no, won't publish details of the schools affected, won't tell us the scale of the problem, won't tell us the cost of the problem. So, of course, I can't point to the figure that tells us how much it's going to cost and say, yep, yeah, we're going we're gonna to okay. fund that because we don't know. Bridget Phillipson, the Shadow Education Secretary, has spent months with her colleagues tabling parliamentary question okay. after parliamentary question, trying to get the information out. So, you know, with respect, these are questions to put to 
to Gillian uh, Keegan. I hope she won't give you a four-letter answer, but, you know, these are problems that she's going to have to solve. And I dare say this is not going to be finished by the time of the general election. A Labour government on school buildings, as with so many other issues, is going to have to pick up the pieces. With your Shadow Health Secretary hat on, how worried are you that this concrete could have been used in hospitals? Well, it has been. There is rack in hospitals. I am worried about the government's hospital building programme in broad terms. I'm not convinced that it's a serious plan that I could just pick up and run with if we win the general election. I'm also concerned that on the hospital building programme, there are seven hospitals on the programme that have RAC, but there are others besides who also have RAC, where local MPs are desperately worried. Doncaster's a really good example, where Doncaster MPs are up in arms as to why their hospital isn't included. So, as with uh, the, the situation in schools and Bridget Phillipson pursuing Gillian Keegan, I'm having to do the same in the Department of Health with Steve Barclay because I want to be able to not just reassure myself but reassure patients and staff working in hospitals that, firstly, they're safe and, secondly, where they aren't, that there's, that there's a funded plan to deal with it. And at the moment, I'm not sure the government can give us those assurances, and that worries me. A uh, final question on this before we go on to the Labour reshuffle. Do you think Gillian Keegan will still be in her job? programme when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer. Because you, when you've been in government for 13 years, as the Conservatives had, you can't duck and run for cover. You have to own your okay. choices and take responsibility. Let's see if Rishi does that. Um, so, Keir Starmer, reshuffled a shadow cabinet. These days are always laced with peril. You know, you think they're great reset moments, but there's always more grumpy people who think that they've been passed over or, or shunted out of government. How do you think it's gone today? Uh, I think it's gone very smoothly, and I think what Keir is focused on is making sure we've got a team that's not just ready to fight the general election, but ready to govern. Because, you know, I, I, it's not just about making a political point when I say that, you know, for me personally, as person who wants to be the country's next health secretary but applies to colleagues, I'm really worried about what an incoming Labour government will inherit if we win the next general election. And there are some difficult choices to be made. And, you know, we want to make sure that it, across the board we've got the right people in the right places and that's what the reshuffle you, was about. Can you name someone on the left of the party who's had a promotion today? What, Angela Rayner's? Well, it's a, not, it's a sideways move, isn't it, really? A good, ex good example. But not... Well, uh, I think for... The Labour Party, having someone like Angela, who is unquestionably one of our best campaigners, one of our most punchy media performers, taking the government on, mm -hmm. on one of the deep injustices of our country, which is so the she... North-South divide, the gap between rich and poor, and the fact that people don't even have decent homes to Important live Important job, sure. Sideways mood for Angela Rayner. Anyone else from the left of the party? Well, I think you'll see across the... the front bench consistently as Keir's been leader, he has sought to change the Labour Party from the worst defeat since 1935, which is what we suffered in 2019. So it's fair enough so to, I'm move, to move so the I'm Labour Party I'm afraid, to I'm afraid to say that there have been a whole number of... I'm not even afraid to say, actually. Mm. I think it is a good thing that Keir has ruthlessly and single-mindedly gone through all those things that led to voters rejecting Labour at the last election and has eliminated every single one of them and built a foundation from which Labour can, can win a general election and be a great government that can turn the country around. You're still Shadow House Secretary. You're not going to get a promotion, are you? I don't want one. I, I, I'm, a, I was absolutely you're, you're delighted. You're a future leader. I'm absolutely delighted. You've got a cap. To, I'm absolutely cap delighted. Where you're going to go. I'm, I'm, I, I, I can now say at this end of the day um, that I'm delighted to be staying on as Shadow Health Secretary. I hope to be the country's next health secretary. I can't think of a better way to spend my professional life than trying to turn around the NHS from its worst crisis in history to build an NHS fit for the future. It's a daunting task, it's a big challenge. Um, I would have been disappointed to get any other job, but of course, I would have done whatever Keir asked me to sure. do and sat here saying, yes, I'm really delighted. <laughs> but I, honestly, I'm genuinely <laughs> made up, so I'm absolutely delighted. Um, I just want to bring in uh, Dell and Nicky at this point. Um, Dell, what's your take on the Labour reshuffle? Uh, <clears throat> it looked good to me. You know, uh, I think what Keir said about putting his strongest team on the pitch for the election, I think that's what it said to me when I looked at the players there. I think uh, Angie's a force of nature. Uh, the, I, I look at that as a promotion. I think that's a smart move to put her in that role for levelling up. Um, you know, there was nothing not to like about it. I don't understand all the, all the language around Blairites and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I really don't get that, all of that kind of 
um, factional stuff that the media tries to big up. I'm not sure that it really exists, so for me that was, you know, not happening. And you must be pleased to see Ed Miliband staying in post as well. Yeah, Ed, Ed is fantastic at his job. I mean, he's passionate about uh, net zero and, uh, and green energy, so I think he's the best man for the job. I think he got it right. What was your take on Waza's comments there as well, uh, saying that actually it's fair enough that Keir Starmer has been moving the party towards the centre, making it more electable? Well, I think um, that's, the, that's the kind of aim of all political parties, isn't it, to be electable? Mm -hmm. And if, if that means you have to move to the centre, then that means you're listening to voters, so I don't see an issue with that at all. Nikki, successful reshuffle, you think, for Keir Starmer? Oh, well, that's uh, a matter for, for the Labour Party. I mean, I think as a member of another party, mm -hmm. we all enjoy in Westminster sort of fantasy cabinet, uh, fantasy shadow cabinet reshuffles. Well, everyone's had a go in your uh, party. So, uh, well, you know, it's uh, we like to obviously um, uh, spread opportunity around. So that's very much a Conservative <laughs> uh, uh, a policy. Um, look, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to see. I mean, I think the fact is that um, if you are in position as Secretary of State, you know, who's shadowing you is of interest, but actually what you're focused on is the job in hand. And as you said, it's been a busy day and there's plenty going on for the government. Yeah, there is. We're going to talk about that with both of you later as well. Um, I just want to... that It's been a bit of a contrast between Rishi Sunak's reshuffle and Keir Starmer's. Do you think that Rishi Sunak's was a bit limited, I guess, when he could have offered a reset? Well, I mean, look, I, I don't know. I haven't spoken to number 10 about it, but I get the impression that last week was very much uh, perhaps a, you know, a first go, if you like, because of Ben Wallace having said as Defence Secretary that he wanted to, to move on. And then that obviously meant that uh, Claire Coutinho mm -hmm. um, it, it came in as, as Energy Secretary, I suppose, one of those sadnesses we're talking about this, isn't it? Is we're not going to talk about the Energy Bill probably tonight, and yet that's going to be a big thing in Westminster tomorrow. And Claire, who's brilliant, is going to have her first outing at the dispatch box. Um, I, I suspect there might be more, more to come in terms of reshuffles, but who knows? Who knows, uh, indeed. Um, really interesting to hear uh, from all of you. Thank you very much.